What's up guys, Vinny here with Sneaker Tweaker and today we have the most anticipated video of 2022. The top five basketball sneakers of the year. This list is jam packed with talent. There's a lot of shoes that I had to leave off because everything was just so good. Let's start it off with number five. My number five pick of the year is the Nike KD15. These shoes have a lot of good things going for it and then some really minor negative things. The best things about the shoe are the traction. It does stop on a dime. It has really nice loud squeak and collects very little dust. The cushion offers a full length zoom strobe encased in a cushion midsole which does provide a ton of impact protection and energy return. As for the lockdown that's where the negative comes in a little bit because until you break it in there is some heel slippage. Some people say that heel slippage just stayed with them throughout the whole time. In my case it definitely didn't do that and once I broke in the shoe it just went away. The other negative thing for me specifically is with the track it has nothing to do with the traction itself as much as it has to do with the durability of it. As you can see, the durability wasn't all that great on the traction, but everything else worked perfectly fine. And then also the heel slippage was very minor. But even then, ranking five in this list is no shame because as I mentioned in the beginning, there's a lot of good performers. My number four pick is the Puma. MB02. This shoe had a lot of good things going for it and really there was very few negative things and the negative I'll get to in just a second but positive one of the major ones being the traction. The traction I would say is better than last year's and last year's shoe was a top performer but this one is better collects less dust and on top of that you do get a nice loud squeak cushion is a lot better as well you have nitro foam in the heel thicker than last year's and you also have it in the forefoot in this case this is where some people see it as negative or maybe a positive positive being it does provide more impact protection because of the cushion but due to that you also ride a little higher off the ground so some people say there are some instability issues I didn't have that, which is why this is one of my favorite shoes of the year. Overall, lockdown and everything all together, this was a great shoe and can't go wrong with this one either. My number three shoe is the Serious Players Only Player One. Honestly, this is a shoe that I didn't know existed until very recently, or not specifically the shoe, but the brand. But I saw where Tester's talking about it, DG Hoops, and a few other YouTube or YouTube channels. But honestly, I'm glad I got these things. Everyone and every place was saying they are reminiscent of Kobe's. And while that is true, a lot of people were saying it's more reminiscent of the 8s. I would say it's more reminiscent of the 11s in just the looks of it and even the performance. Overall, let me break it down and tell you that these things performed really well. Traction was amazing. It collected pretty much no dust, squeaked really loud, and you could stop on just about any floor. The cushion with the drop in midsole was very reminiscent of the Kobe's. And in opposition to that, I guess, it performed much better where there was no durability issues as far as the cushion bottoming out. And the lockdown was amazing. And even the breathability as far as the material on the upper was super nice because it's super thin, but it's also really well reinforced. So you have no issues as far as ripping out of the upper or just not lasting for a very long time. Overall, this shoe came as a surprise to me and I'm honestly glad I gave them a chance, tried it out, I wasn't disappointed. It's in my top five shoes of the year and if you guys have not been giving these Chinese brands a chance, you guys are seriously missing out, I would recommend it, go check them out. This is just one of many that have been dropping some nice shoes, so check them out and I will get to more of them in just a little bit. My number two shoes are the New Balance 2A V2 and the V3. So surprisingly enough, both of these shoes actually came out in 2022. New Balance decided to release, I guess, two top tier performing shoes and in the same line and within the same year, just a few months apart. There's very little difference as far as the two shoes, the cushion, performed pretty similarly. Maybe one of them had a little bit more bounce than the other. In this case, I would say that two-way V2 had a little bit more bounce, whereas the V3 was a little bit more firm and responsive. But overall, both of them provided great impact protection. Both of them provided amazing traction that really neither of them had no issues with dust. 
and both of them were able to grip onto any floor. Lockdown was amazing. And the only thing I would say is the V3 is a little bit more of a low cut. And if you're partial to a low cut, maybe that might be more of a selling point to you. But overall, both of these were great performers and both of these were some of my go-to shoes throughout this year. New Balance has been killing it and I'm loving seeing all these different brands on these top lists and not just Nike. And before I reveal my number one pick of the year, we have a couple honorary mentions. The first one being the Leaning Way of Weight 8082 Ultra. Now this is one of those other Chinese brands that I was talking about. Leaning is a little bit of a bigger brand in this case than series players only, but they've come a long way from where they began because where they began, they weren't great shoes, but over time, they put a lot of R&D into their products and were able to grow and make some of the best shoes of the year. This one is very reminiscent of the Kobe 9s or the Kobe 8s. Traction, great. In my specific colorway, because it is a translucent outsole, the traction performed well while it was clean. You do have to wipe dust off it pretty frequently and it does collect it very easily and just overall really hard to wipe. When it's clean, it does bite the floor really well. I've heard that the solid rubber outsole performs a lot better, doesn't collect as much dust, easier to wipe off, but the translucent one does give some problems in that aspect. As for the cushion, it does have a drop in midsole, just like a, with a lot of shoes this year. And in this case, the ultra version features a boom midsole and it performs really well, provides great impact protection, just does what it needs to do. As for the lockdown, that's great as well and I had no issues there. My only real, I guess, issue was kind of with the fit because it does fit pretty snug and it does take a little while to break in and if you have the time or if you're willing to go through the pain go true to size but if you don't want to go through the pain i would say go up half a size but i guess besides the translucent outsole and that fit everything else about the shoe was great my other honorary mention is the under armor curry 10. so this shoe everything great about it but just like a broken record, the only, only, only thing is the cushion. The lockdown is great. It's improved from last year's even. This warp upper, as far as what Under Armour's been doing with the Curry brand, performs really well, provides great lockdown and breathability. That's great. The traction, you guys know how flow is. It literally stops on dime the only thing is there's no squeak but the performance aspect is not hindered by that the only thing is with flow there isn't really much impact protection so if you're looking for that plush feel or that great energy return you're not going to get it from this but every other thing about this shoe is great as for my number one pick i couldn't choose between these shoes so i'm tying them up and what i have is the way of weight 10 and the Nike LeBron 20. Both of these shoes perform amazingly and honestly, I don't find anything wrong with either one. Take the time to break them in and overall, you're not gonna have any issues. For traction, the Wave Wave 10 literally for me had like pop your hip out traction and it worked just great. And I don't know if that had anything to do with it being a solid rubber outsole, but in this one, I got a solid rubber outsole and no issues whatsoever. Literally did not collect any dust and just had a super loud squeak and grip through any floor. As for the LeBron and traction, same exact thing. This one's a translucent outsole. It did collect a little dust, but it's super easy to wipe off. Again, for those of you that like it, really loud squeak. And even with the dusty floors or the clean floors, it performed amazingly. As for the cushion, this is where it differs a little bit. So with the Wave Weight 10, you get a lot of impact protection and energy return. It has a lot of bounce. So this shoe right here has full length boom, but not just that, you have a carbon fiber midfoot shank plate going from the back of the shoe all the way to almost the forefoot. So you, it's about three fourths length. And it's really bendy and flexible. So you can tell that whatever energy you put into this, you're getting back. It's just super awesome. Really, as far as, like I said, impact protection and energy return, there isn't a shoe that does it better than this. As for the LeBron 20, 
You have a full length Cushlon midsole with a four foot zoom turbo unit that's top loaded and a large volume heel zoom unit that's bottom loaded. So you have a ton of cushion in a very low profile shoe. This one, I would say if you're wanting to be, you know, more low to the ground and everything is the shoe to go with. But if you're wanting more impact protection and more bounce, this one. For lockdown, they both performed amazingly. Overall, just no issues. The Wave Weight 10, I just honestly choked the laces on my shoes. So my foot just stayed right in place. The LeBron 20, same exact thing. The cool thing with the LeBron 20 as well is it has this internal heel counter, which is built off of Nike Sphere technology. Same thing that was implemented in the original LeBron shoe and also the LeBron 2. And it's super cozy on, on your Achilles and keeps it right in place. Overall, you can't go wrong with any of the shoes on this list, but these two for me are leaps and bounds everything else. So if you are wanting to get shoes, especially from anything this year, I would say start off with these, but everything else on this list are great performers as well. Overall, I'm just excited that there's so much variety this year and that Nike isn't the only one killing it. But all this competition is even good for Nike because you have shoes like this, the LeBron 20 that come out. And last year, whereas that was a joke, the LeBron 19 was just a brick of a shoe. Thank you for all the support this year. I know I'm a little newer, but I appreciate anyone who's willing to give me feedback so I can improve, so I can put out better content for you guys. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And if you'd enjoy more content like this, Please like, subscribe, and follow, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. With the traction, but it has nothing to do with the performance as, as much as it has. It has nothing to do with the performance as much as it has. I, it has nothing to do with the performance as much as it has. has <laughs> it has nothing to do with the performance as much it has. <laughs> it makes it worse. It has nothing to do with the traction itself as much as it has to do with the durability of it.